decades of Hop Pines Pavilion is the renovated, sparkling home of the Houston Cougars. They kick it off tonight against the Oregon Ducks. 18th ranked Oregon and undefeated Houston. And we have our Jimmy V pins. On camera, Kevin Brown, John Sunfold. What a night this is for the University of Houston. A great pleasure for us to be here as you were, we rehearse this open. And the Cougars look for a signature start to their brand new building. You know, and exciting because the city of Houston is excited. And Kelvin Sampson's got a veteran ball club. And he's looking to get off to a great start. He's got Corey Davis as the leader of this team. Rob Gray was the leading scorer last year. But Davis has taken over and done everything. You know, Davis was solid a year ago and picked uh, to, to be the leader this year. You see his numbers. He's at the very top of the AAC in scoring. Outstanding shooter. Outstanding leader. He's tough. He's physical. He's one of Kelvin Sampson type players. Oregon, meanwhile, is led by one of the athletic freaks in the country. 7-2, son of Minute, Bowl Bowl. And Bowl Bowl can do about everything. He can shoot it. Uh, he can run the floor. He rebounds. He's got a skill set that's unusual for his size. Now, Dane Altman would like him to be a little more physical inside, but maybe it's not his game quite yet. He's got big numbers early in the season. It'll be a tough matchup for the Cougars. Oregon looking to avenge the loss to Texas Southern. The team whose home court Houston used the last year plus. Scenic coming up next, Oregon versus Houston. I, oh, hope. To... Okay. Hey, I, I hope you just taped that because that was as good as we can. <laughs> I, I mean, it was. I hear you a little bit better. Uh, a little bit. Right. How much time we got dressed before we're on the air? Yes. Yes. Hey, Mike. One minute. All right, let's have some fun, y'all. It's V-Week on ESPN as we continue Jim Balvano's fight against cancer. For the first time, the Houston Cougars will call the brand spanking new Fertitta Center home, the renovated Hoffines Pavilion. After nearly five decades of Cougar basketball, is a crown jewel deep in the heart of Texas where Houston looks to stay unbeaten against the number 18 Oregon Ducks. What a scene this will be tonight. Kevin Brown and John Sunbold, we are thrilled to be here to open this brand new building. Houston played all its home games last year and in the first couple of weeks down the road at Texas Southern. They are here in a marquee non-conference game. And, and the city is excited. I mean, yeah. driving up uh, today, it's a packed house. Uh, the noise is at a high level. It's going to be tough for Oregon to compete early. It's a good Houston team, too. They were an NCAA tournament team last year, led by Rob Gray. He's graduated, and Corey Davis has filled that role. You know, Davis is one of those Kelvin Sampson-type players. He's tough. Uh, he's physical only as a guard. He's at the top of the stat sheet when you think of the conference play. But he's a guy that Kelvin's going to lean on for his leadership. And it will be a challenge and a mismatch maybe for the Ducks. The highlight for Oregon is seven foot two freak of nature, Bull Bull, the son of Manute. He can do a little bit of everything. He, uh, he is a freak. Uh, he can do everything. He can shoot it. Uh, he can run. He can defend. Uh, Dana Altman might like a little more meanness, orneriness, toughness. But Bull Bull is unique. He's got a 7'8 wingspan. He can do a lot of things, and his numbers early show that. The highest ranked player in the class who's not currently on a Duke roster. Number four in the ESPN 100 at 7'2 and 235. Oregon coming off one of the worst losses, maybe the worst of the Dana Altman era at home on Monday. Oddly enough, to Texas Southern. The team that has been hosting Houston as this arena has been renovated for the last year plus. Cougars won 19 games in a row, just a couple of miles down the road at Texas Southern's H&PE Arena. That's tied for the second longest home win streak in the nation. And tonight in game one in the Fertitta Center, they take aim and the team picked to win the Pac-12. Yeah, you know, you take a look at Oregon, and they are a young squad. They don't all know that. And Kelvin Sampson's got a team of veterans, guys who've been around that are tough. We'll see how Oregon handles. This crowd was raucous. It started at about 7 o'clock at a high pitch. Sold out crowd 
And Houston has the ball with Breon Brady winning the tip. 6'7", maybe the tallest player we see for Houston tonight. 6'10", Chris Harris's status uncertain. Peyton Pritchard with a miss, but an offensive rebound for the Oregon Ducks at 4-2. Out of the Pac-12. It is a big Oregon front line. Two starters at 6-9, and Paul White and Kenny Wooten and the 7-2 bowl. Dane Altman basically told his squad at shoot around today, just handle the emotion early. When we get offensive sets, make sure we turn the ball side to side, get good looks, be physical because they've got a size advantage, but he knows the Kelvin Sampson team is very tough. Armani Brooks. <laughs> Houston has the first bucket in the Pertina Center. If you think of the Kelvin Sampson team, tough on the defensive end, they rarely allow second chance points. When they get it, they will push. They're not a tall team, but they can run. They can knock in open shots. This is Kenny Wooten going to work on Cedric Alley Jr. And Wooten out muscles him for two. Good to see Wooten back. He got hurt the first half of that last game against Texas Southern and did not play in the second half, and that hurt the Ducks. Yeah, they were outscored 57-45 in that second half. Matchup 2-3 zone. They are long on the back end. Houston worked on this a lot in, in shoot around. They've got to move, they've got to cut. Shot clock at six for Brooks. Another three for the American Conference leader in three-pointers made and three-point percentage. And Kevin, you've seen it a lot when a hot shooter gets going. A guy who can really shoot it, he'll look to keep shooting and that will stretch this defense. It allows more lane cutting for this Houston team. There's the first bucket for Bull Bull, the 7-2 freshman with a jam. He's fun to watch. Moves, he cuts, long. He's seven for 13 from three-point range this year, too. Hit four last game, had a season high 32 in that 89-84 loss to Texas Southern. You know, the interesting part of Bull Bull, I mean, when he came out of high school, everybody said, loves to settle for the three-point shot a lot. Now, Dane Altman will give him freedom to shoot it, but only if it's good, only if it's part of the offense and he's in rhythm. White is the three. Rebound fought for and won by Robinson. Two teams that will push, both average about 80 points a game. Houston second in the American in scoring. Oregon sixth at 80.2 points per game in the Pac-12, a higher scoring lead. Robinson got a hand in there to knock it away from Pritchard. Major four-year contributor, just one of two players along with Brooks, who played in the old Hines Pavilion. It's really been a big roster makeover for Kelvin Sampson the last two years. I flew into Houston last night about 10 o'clock, staying on campus in a hotel. I went for a walk. The building was open because they were still trying to clean stuff up. I walked in here at 10.30, and Galen was shooting baskets. And I came down and said, have you guys, have you even had a practice here? He goes, no, not really. It's so brand new, we've not been in here. And he said, I simply want to get up a lot of shots. He said he stayed here until about 11.30 p.m. Did he say, who are you? Random man I walking in I, I just got to hang around. <laughs> I just joined the cleaning crew that was trying to get it all ready. That pass knocked out of bounds, but it's a shot clock violation first and foremost. That stifling Kelvin Sampson defense on full display there. Active hands, quickness, they know because of the size disadvantage. They don't want it to be a grind down game that Oregon can pound it inside, even though Dana's team, they love to go up and down and score. Houston last year, 27-8. Third in the American Conference. First NCAA tournament win in more than 30 years. And here's the thing on any offensive set. If you stand, then they can almost feel like they play a zone. You've got to cut to make sure you take defenders with you. Three to shoot, Alley. Davis has to hoist. Got the iron, rebound Bryson Gresham. Gresham, one of the top offensive rebounders in the conference. About three and a half per game. And a jump ball will head to Oregon. You know, any time you get a rebound offensively, if you have a hand of it, you just go back up. Uh, and he could have gone up the other end. You know Bull Bull's behind you, and that's probably the thought process. Bull Bull did not block out, and it was an easy rebound. But once you bring it down there, you've got really no options. Bull handling. Foul is called offensively against Oregon. 
Paul White down low. Our first stoppage in the Fertitta Center. He's Houston on top. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Duluth Trading Company. Tough, ingenious work, designed and tested by tradesmen. You're good, all right? Yeah, Mike, giving you a little bit. good. You're watching the American Conference on ESPN. First game ever in the Fertitta Center, the completely renovated former Hawpines Pavilion. $60 million and $20 million of that from Tillman Fertitta, the owner of the Houston Rockets and the chairman of the UH System Board of Regents. They dropped the seating capacity here from about 8,500 to 7,100, completely gutted the inside. The students are behind us and across from the benches. That's all luxury seating behind the benches that you see. Seems to be the new model with some of these newer stadiums, John. You, you cut the attendance in general, make it a more intimate feel, though, and that's certainly what they've done here. Yeah, this has a great feeling to it. When you walk in, uh, no matter where you are, it's a good seat, and you feel like you're on top of the game. State of the art, everything inside. It took them a little longer because of the flood, and the hurricane, but what a special place that they've now built for this two region and the program. Not a bad seat in the house. December 1st, 2018, the 49th anniversary of the opening of Hoppines Pavilion. Anytime you're playing against the Dana Altman team in a half court set, you're going to have to guard hard cuts away from the ball. They like to cut off the post, the high post cuts. And when they cut hard, it makes the defense tough and it stretches it. This is Corey Davis Jr. Second leading scorer of the American at an even 20 per game. His first bucket. Ducks are playing with Peyton Pritchard and Will Richardson, a four-star freshman wearing zero. Part of an excellent recruiting class for an Oregon team that is younger than most Dana Altman teams. Ball driving on Robinson and Gresham was there for the denial. So far, small sample size, but Houston not struggling too much with the Oregon size. No, and neither team, because they're so well coached, are going to get easy buckets. Because both teams get back defensively. Alley. So not, and now you've got to find a ways of getting easy buckets or easy shots. And if you're open, you've got to make open. What's the best way to do that for Oregon offense? Well, when you push, they've got to still stretch it out a little bit. They play a high post. They usually do that because that allows for more cutters. You got to be more efficient on your cuts, harder, so that it gets defenses. But here's the key: if you put it on the floor, this is what's going to happen against you. Rob, They'll take it away. Robinson, one of the great on-ball defenders in the conference, took it away from Pritchard. Robinson, their steals leader last year. Davis trying to get around Bull and Richardson stepped out of bounds. We'll stay with Houston, 15 to shoot. And when you think again of Houston's defense, they're going to have weak side help because they're well coached, right? So if you go to the basket, understand where they're coming from. Is it the top guy? Is it the low guy? And you just mentioned Robinson's got such good hands. If you put it on the floor against the Kelvin Sampson team, they're going to get to it. Quick ball movement. Nate Hinton, the freshman, just into the game and onto the scoreboard. Preseason AAC Freshman of the Year. He's had some moments, uh, good and bad, like most freshmen do. And under a Kelvin Sampson coach team, he's going to learn early how to play, how he needs to play, and he's been solid. One of the top freshman recruits for Kelvin Sampson in his five years at Houston. The recruiting has gotten better and better as this team has won and as these facilities have been upgraded. Hinton, well long at a three. The offensive rebound fought for. And, and it will go to Oregon. And at time, the freshman can get excited, yeah. right? That, by the way, is 35. Fabian White Jr. for Houston. Not expected to play. He's still recovering from surgery on his foot in June. And Kelvin Sampson told us before the game, I may throw him out there just to see what happens. And 35, White. What a terrific freshman year is out there for the first time for the Cougars. Kind of game where they may need his size. 
Oregon needs a bucket. I mean, they've got to be patient, but they need a bucket. They've got to attack it away to find something. They missed four in a row for the field. Wooten making five. Davis tips the rebound to Gresham, and that's a travel. Tuesday night, the 24th annual Jimmy V Classic tips off the Garden. Oklahoma and Notre Dame, the first meeting ever at 7 Eastern, followed by West Virginia and Florida at 9. Both games on ESPN, streaming live on the ESPN app. Fortunate to be here, part of V-Week. Jimmy V Classic, the men's Tuesday, women's Jimmy V Classic tomorrow. Should be an excellent game, UConn and Notre Dame. The cuts, uh, cuts offensively are not hard enough. And what I mean that, if you don't cut hard as you're away from the ball, cutting to the ball, you're not dragging any other defender with you. Your guy's staying with you. And it makes it difficult against a solid defensive team. Ball fouled on the floor to the dismay of the folks in red. You would always think there's an advantage when Bull Bull get, goes inside because of his height. Now, he doesn't play down there all the time. And in many, again, of Altman's sets, it's more of a high center position than a low guy, low post. How much of an adjustment is that for Dana Altman? I think it's a big adjustment. But but Bull Bull is not your normal 7-2 guy. He likes doing that, and he can do that. His 8-3 of the year on 14 attempts from deep for Bull. He might have to have more freedom with those numbers. Number four player in the ESPN 100, the top three, Barrett, Williamson, Reddish, all at Duke. Highest rated recruit in Oregon history. And look where Bull Bull can kind of play the, the middle linebacker position up and down the center of the defense. Robinson missed the three. A lot of Oregon box outs down low. Dana Altman will like that, and it draws a foul. Bull Bull with five early. The Ducks down three in Houston. Big day in Houston Cougar athletic history. The opening of the Fertitta Center after 49 years of Hall Pines Pavilion. This was part of the vision for Kelvin Sampson. He took over five years ago. They didn't have a practice facility. They have the Guy Lewis facility next door. Had to practice in Hall Pines. And what Kelvin Sampson's done here at Houston, I think maybe one of the more overlooked jobs in the country because Houston was not seen as a basketball school since that great run in the 80s. Kelvin has turned them into a power once again. You know what, what's interesting is both of these coaches are great program builders. And, and we think of Kelvin Sampson and what he did in Oklahoma. And, and, his, and a short stay at Indiana, but the NCAA tournament. And then when he got here, I thought he was a perfect hire here. I, I did a lot of his games when he was in Oklahoma. He saw what he built. Uh, he knows what types of players he likes to recruit. Uh, tough kids that play hard. And when they're in his system three or four years, he has special teams like he did at Oklahoma. That led them to a final four. Maybe in white. Smother, there's a jump ball with Richardson. So you've seen Kelvin Sampson's teams for how many years? A uh, long, long time. And, 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 I, and the impressive part is that they're all the same. They, it starts on the defensive end. They're tough. They're physical. They rebound. So that's, that's the norm. Offensively, the years he's got more productive players, they're going to have better teams. Took Houston to the round of 32 last year. Heartbreaking loss to the eventual national runner-up, Michigan. Fabian White with a miss. The follow is there from Hinton and a foul. How impressive, though, by White to just take it to the rim. Now, Bull Bull gets out of the play, and when he's not around the rim, it changes the dynamics for this Cougar team to attack. Foul against Victor Bailey. And Hinton completes the three-point play. He has five early for Houston. Nine minutes or so gone by, and Oregon with just seven points against this smothering on-ball Houston D. 
little too much smothering there. It was a violation of space fell. Fabian White was in the individual cylinder for his first. So Breon Brady, right before we left, picked up a second foul. White out of the game with his first foul. Again, still pretty banged up. Could be big minutes for Bryson Gresham, 55 for Houston the rest of this half. Kevin, I think the key when you watch this and keep watching this game is the fact that Oregon is not getting into things offensively. They like to move the basketball and have a lot of cuts. They're sitting on the ball, each guy, and, and they're just not creating a lot of space for each other. And shots are more difficult that way. Pritchard had to hook it up with two on the shot clock. A lot of deep shot clock possession so far for Oregon. Bull wants it at the high post. Now Pritchard to slow it down with 12 to shoot. A very young team, this Duck squad. Highly ranked to start the year. And Dane Altman kind of rolled his eyes when he saw the rankings when they came out. There's an offensive foul. Charge drawn by the freshman hit who is everywhere so far. You put it on the floor again. Where is the defend? Where are the defenders coming from when you're playing against a well-coached team? So if I'm on the floor, many times I've got to have two feet stop and then kick it to the shooter because weak side help is going to be there, and you must know that as a player. If not, you'll, you'll, you'll have a charge, the ball will go the other way. And that's one of the rare upperclassmen on this Oregon team. White with his second. A takeaway for the Ducks, and Richardson cannot finish, but he's fouled. Good hands, I believe it was Victor Bailey Jr. Lackadaisical on the offensive side that time by Houston. Kelvin Sampson frustrated with his leadership out front of his guards. Foul against Corey Davis. Will Richardson, number 39 in the ESPN 100. Four-star point guard at Oak Hill Academy. And he missed the first. Solid player. He'll continue to get better under the toolage of Altman and his staff. Not easy to step in and play a lead guard position at any school, but uh, Oregon, the, the sights are set high when you're picked to win the Pac-12. Fans want you to get back to the Final Four once you got there once. And Will Richardson's thrown into the fire early this season. The types of teams Dan Altman's had have changed, haven't they, the last couple of years? Elite Eight, Final Four. Last year missed the tournament with a very young team. And now 10 freshmen or sophomores among his scholarship players. And that's what changes. That was a veteran team that went to the Final Four, right? Guys that had been around and knew each other, knew the system, could wear people down, could outplay you, could outrun you. But what has changed for Dana Altman is the fact you take a look at those numbers, how young this team is, and the leadership above, they don't have enough guys. We were just told, by the way, by uh, from Don Daly, the lead official, the team fouls on the ribbon boards here in the arena will not advance past four. That's a programming error, and that will be assessed at the half. Hey, first day in a new arena. If that's the worst thing that happens, I, it's okay. I, I figure Kelvin had it set at four. We never go <laughs> over four. We, we're good. Davis a long three. Knocked out of the hands of Bowl and won by Gresham. Another offensive rebound. Hit with a jumper. Pretty simple if you don't block out. And one of the things Dane Altman has talked to early in the season is we're not physical enough and not blocking out and attacking rebounds well enough. He said it's gonna, it shouldn't take us a while to learn that, but the longer it does, the worse we'll be. Bull called for a carry. And another Oregon turtle. So Kevin, to think about again, offensive possessions for Oregon. Not been many good ones. Six turnovers, eight points. Brooks all alone, left it short. Grisham had the possession, but Bull gets the rebound. Ducks at 84 on Monday. They're averaging over 80 a game. Woof! With a jam down low, and Oregon finally gets a field goal. The quickest of the Duck jumpers off their feet would be Woot. Explosive. Davis bumped and fouled by Richardson. 
Kenny Wooten last year had 92 blocked shots. His offensive game, they hope, has evolved a little bit. Though he hasn't shot it too well from the field, but he can get up. They have a couple of great shot blockers, not just 7-2 ball. Wooten is an explosive kid. Yeah, well, Wooten is so quick off his, his feet. Last year, all defensive Pac-12 team. Uh, he was a hero in the, in the Pac-12 tourney games uh, defensively, right? Getting off the feet, making blocks. Changes their team if used right by his teammates. Now, the officials are over at the scorer's table again. As you can see, it's 15-10 with 8.44 to go. Here in the arena on the video boards, it's still 13-7 Houston with 10-10 to go. So the score and the time has not advanced on these brand new video boards in this brand new arena. So there are still some kinks to work out. There you go. That is incongruous with reality. So we'll all live in this virtual reality for the moment here in the Fertitta Center. It's only correct for you viewers at home. That's right. And that's why we're here. See, somebody needs to bring in, like when you played intramural basketball and you just had the, the score on the side where you turn over and flip over the number. Somebody needs or to the, bring or that the, in. Or, you know, the PE class, a chalkboard, just someone just write the score. <laughs> I like the idea of one of the assistants just holding a chalkboard on the sideline, waiting in the score. They get some pink sidewalk chalk. Davis missed a three. Gretchen had the rebound and then nearly fouled Bull trying to rip it away. You know what's interesting is the fact that Oregon has not played well. And Houston has missed opportunities to stretch this lead. They're missing open jump shots. They're getting good looks. There's a good one in the three, Corey Davis Jr. Timeout, Oregon. And let's remember, it's a new building to them, too. They've not practiced with First timeout taken by the Ducks. The lead, eight for Houston. An opening night in the Fertitta Center. Second leading scorer in the American, Corey Davis. He's the man here in H-Town. During the break, Tillman Fertitta took a quick drive down to the local bank, <laughs> dropped another $20 million in. Now we got a working scoreboard here at the Fertitta Center. 18-10 at 8-10. It's all in sync for the Cougars. You know, Dana Altman has had such a wonderful career at Oregon, 20 consecutive winning seasons. But this is a different type of challenge for him with 10 scholarship freshmen and sophomores, and it's far from a finished product for his Ducks. You know, I think about his uh, career. He's coached at junior college, was terrific. Southeast Junior College and then Moberly Junior College in Missouri. Before going on to Marshall, K-State, kind of great, et cetera and in Oregon, but it, it may go back to almost what he had to do in junior college, right? You get some new talent every year or two, and you got to make quick changes because you don't really have that leadership up top. And if you've got great freshman class, in today's world, how many of them are one and done? You, you don't know. There's a missed three from Abu Kijab. Another great defensive possession by Houston Ducks are four for 13 for the field with seven turnovers. In last eight possessions, four of them have been turnovers, and I mean, they just have not looked good in the offensive end. Good move. How about Davis taking it up over the freshman Francis Okoro, the 6'9 freshman for Oregon. Corey Davis Jr. has seven. Only three Houston players have scored. Davis and Hinton with seven, Brooks with six, and they lead by ten. And any time Bull Bull on the offensive end goes into the lane, he just kind of bounces into the lane. He, he's not physical enough to establish a low post position to throw it inside. And Houston, again, on the run. Brooks off a turnover. A three! What a start in the new building. It's a new night, it's a new arena, it's an old arena. But the crowd is welcome, they're loud, and the Cougars are on a roll. Defensively, they've been sharp. 
And when you do that, you can push, you can get out, and your shooter's got free shots. And this place has been electric in that timeout. Everybody on their feet, everybody loud. Kelvin Sampson waving his arms to get crowd involved. What an atmosphere. Not often you see Dan Altman take two timeouts in 75 seconds. But his team has struggled offensively, just gave up a couple of easy shots. You know, had a great visit with Dan Altman today at shoot around, and, and he knows his team has a long way to go to be the team that everybody, you know, predicted early in the season. Richardson, strong drive, finishing a foul for the freshman Richardson. That stops an 8 0 Houston run. Terrific pass by Wooten back to Richardson to get him that bucket. Good finish. Again, against an aggressive defensive team like Houston, you've got to have good back cuts. They've got to be hard, they've got to go, and the passes have to be on time. If any of that part, if the cut's not hard, if they're not sharp, or the pass is lazy, you're in trouble. The last two fouls, by the way, Gresham's second, and then Corey Davis's second. So Davis has left the game, and Fabian White has returned for Gresham. And you start thinking about Kelvin Sampson. Doesn't like to play a lot of players. He thinks by the end of this season, middle of conference, of enough players to play nine or ten. We're still missing Dejan Giroux. Played the first game of the year, the UMass transfer. Out for an unspecified reason. As White finishes and scores his first basket in his season debut. Exciting young player, Fabian White, back from a broken fifth metatarsal in his left foot. We're hoping he would play Tuesday. He has suited up tonight. And take a look at all the area below the free throw line that's open. And the reason it is is because the Ducks like to pass and hard cuts usually off a high post. The offense, though, is almost in slow motion because they're sitting on the dribble too long. And that allows a defensive team to dig their heels and get after you. And if you're not passing and cutting, it's a long night against the Kelvin Sampson team. Again, Oregon is being bailed out offensively by some of these fouls. That's two on White. So now Brady, Gresham, and White, the three bigs all have two for Houston. Ball, ball back in for Oregon. The question, how does Kelvin Sampson handle this big man rotation with all of them in foul trouble? Richardson one and one, and he missed it. And a foul is called against Oregon. Victor Bailey, his second. Try to go around a Houston defender. Victor Bailey Jr., who, whose dad was a wide receiver in the early 90s at the University of Missouri. Played a few years in the NFL. Just uh, a Texas kid back home. He's got family here and friends. Of Austin, Texas. And he's got about 20 friends and family members here. A, a spot player a year ago, but he'll have more minutes this season. Very athletic, talented lefty. Brooks crosses over Pritchard. In and out. Offensive rebound. White is mugged. Here's Maybe the, White Jr. to the line. And here's the other thing about a veteran team. You kind of know who's going to shoot when they shoot, right? When they catch, make moves. That allows Biggs to get ready to hammer the offensive glass. So whether it's Robinson, whether it's Davis, whether it's Brooks that have the ball on the outside, they're pretty much the guys who got freedom to shoot. That allows any of the bigs for Houston to think of attacking the offensive glass right away. That foul, by the way, actually called on the floor. No free throws for White. Houston not yet in the bonus. Next foul will do. Cedric Alley. Robinson cuts past ball. Met and fouled by Wooten, and Robinson will be shooting. Good ball movement. Again, the hard cuts and the ball movement made, made a defensive team like Oregon chase the ball. So the ball, ball runs out against the guard. He's got no chance as he's running out. Guard's too quick. And a foul, the second against Wooten. So Wooten and Bailey in the game with two for Oregon. Tomorrow, 4 Eastern on ESPN2, the aforementioned women's Jimmy V Classic. Number one, Notre Dame. Number two, Connecticut. The first time these two meet since the epic 
Final Four game last year where Arike Agunbowale won it with a jumper in the final second. ESPN2 are streaming live on your ESPN app. Probably the best college game, men or women, all season Maybe. last year was that. That was fun to watch. Maybe the second best was the final. When Notre Dame yeah. beat Mississippi State. <laughs> Agunbowale right. did it at the buzzer again. Here goes Hit. What a night for the freshman. Hit fouled. And if that's Bailey, it's his third. It is Victor Bailey's oh, third foul from Victor Oregon. Bailey. It gives you a little feel of why the coaching staff for the Cougars are excited number about Nate Hinton. He can attack Hinton. off the dribble, 6'5", 215 pounds. He can move, he can jump, he can shoot it. And he's got confidence as a player. Does he look like a freshman to you? Uh, if, if you sat here long enough, when Kelvin coaches him, yeah, because they can pull out stuff. Uh, he, he's got a maturity to him, and there's a, a confidence about how he plays on both ends. Most freshmen, when you play for coaches like Dana Altman or Kelvin Sampson, a lot of the freshman part comes out of the defensive end. Hitting right now is under the basket. Bowl guarded by White. Off to Richardson. Trying to get it through to Bowl and taken away by Fabian White. Oregon turns it over again. Cougars with no Corey Davis have their largest lead. Brooks. Shot clock to five. Brooks got it off, and got it from the corner, right in front of the Oregon bench. Wow. Bull with a turnaround. Not a good looking shot. On the road, if you answer buckets with quick shots on the other end, you feel the fire and you feel the excitement. Hinton's three leads to a third first half timeout called by Dana Altman. And this bucket by Brooks. The emotion is in the building, and Oregon takes a quick one. They come right back with it. All Cougars in their new building, the first half. Thank you. Timeouts in the first half. It has been a boiling hot first half for the Houston Cougars in their brand new building, their first game at the Fertitta Center after 19 wins in a row at Texas Southern Home Arena. That is tipped out of bounds off of White and then off of Bowl, 10th Oregon turnover. Good half court set out of a timeout. You had it, Bowl, if you got a 7 2 teammate. And you're Paul White, you don't kind of lob it to the rim, you put away above the rim. Houston got a hand on it, it goes off Bull Bull's hands, and then it's a turnover. So what happens with a young team, somebody for Oregon, usually a veteran, maybe it's Pritchard, maybe it's Paul White that says, we've got to shore it up on possession by possession on the offensive end. If those two don't, the young guys really can't. This is a whole new world, a whole new environment for a freshman to go on the road and to take the noise that is going on in a new facility tonight. 7,100, the brand new capacity. Just about every seat is filled. It is a sellout, the first ever game here at Fertitta Center. I mean, I saw Carl Lewis walking in, right? I mean, everybody in Houston, if you're somebody, is at this game. Tillman Fertitta, the owner of the Rockets, the man who donated $20 million just to our left. 
Can I shout out somebody? Yeah, go ahead. My football partner for this year, Andre Ware. Yeah. We're working together all year. Houston Legend Heisman Trophy. Andre, get your rear end down here for the second <laughs> half, man. What are you doing? We need Heisman in the building tonight. We got everything else. I saw Otis Bird's song, right? Elvin, Legendary Cooper. Elvin Hayes is here because he does the radio broadcast, but Otis Bird's song just put in the Collegiate Hall of Fame. He's here. Uh, the last foul, Fabian White Jr.'s third. So, again, the one downside for Houston here, White has got three fouls, Brady and Gresham two, so Brady returns to the game. And the free throws for Bull Bull, both good. 75% free throw shooter coming in on the year for Bowl, who's got that terrific touch as a seven foot two freshman. Yeah, he really does. Oregon's had a little bit of success with their three quarter, somewhat pressure. Houston, a very veteran guard oriented team. They will turn it over a lot. Dane Altman just trying to change the pace. Look at the length. Got it out. Now you got an open shot, week seven. Alley. Got to get it up. Ball with a rejection. Shot clock violation on the big block for Ball. Houston wanted a goaltend. 7-8 wingspan. You think you might have a shot. He's six feet away when he blocks that. What do you think? Was that coming down? I couldn't tell. It's kind of a cop out, isn't it? When I no, that's it. fine. That's your opinion. <laughs> I, really, I, really I want you to tell. lie. I really could tell. I couldn't tell either. I mean, if you're, I a, asked you, if so you're a Houston, you if, if you're a Houston fan, you'd say yes. Oregon, you'd say no. I'll go with you, Richardson. Got a three, five in a row for Oregon, and Richardson had a solid first half. Robinson, in the backcourt pressure, got it to hit, and Galen Robinson will walk it across. No points, but five assists for the Houston senior. Should be one of four, or one of two Cougar players in history with four seasons of 100 assists. Alley missed the three. And a foul on the floor. This is going against Oregon. So the other thing about Kelvin Sampson and the way he coaches, offensive rebounder sprint to the rim. So if you're a half step off defensively and blocking out, that, that you're off. You're going to catch fouls. His offensive rebounding guys historically dead sprint to the rim for offensive rebounds. Can very you, physical, very fast. Is there a way to take advantage of that if you're Oregon? Well, you got to block out. You, you simply got to put a body on, and because the bigs are a little bit of foul trouble for Houston, you might pick up a foul because of their over-aggressiveness in attacking the offensive players. Hinton got the first with the one and one Abu Kijab with his first foul. Both teams will be in the double bonus, remaining minute 45. What a first half this has been for Nate Hinton. Season I was 15 against Rice. He is up to 14 in the opening half. Highest rated freshman so far, the Kelvin Sampson era, out of Gastonia, North Carolina. Keyjab trying to go one on one. Hinton knocks it away. And Robinson was apparently out of bounds. Boy, Hinton has had an awesome first half. He has been everywhere. Kelvin Sampson uh, given the official an earful. It's Patrick Evans who's hearing it. And there's other things that can get a crowd fired up when they're at home. It's a call they don't like. This place has been a buzz since an hour before the game. We've had a lot nice pass of light. Bull. Missed it. And you got to finish on the road when you get those opportunities. For three, line drive shot grabbed by Brooks. Another offensive rebound. Hitton's, Hitton's really good, right? Off the dribble, shoots it defensively. Fair to say, this is the kind of kid they were not getting the last couple of years with Hop Hines Pavilion as the home crowd. Brand new practice facility two years ago, brand new arena this year. 27 wins last season. It's a deep two for Brooks. He rattles it home. Brooks has that ability. He pulls the ball back behind his head a little bit. And he arches his back, leads it back. 
That makes it even more difficult to try to get to his shot line. Oh, my. Brady blocks Bulls three. Shot clock turned off. Brooks. Offensive rebound, Brady hitting the three. Don't need to shoot those with a shot clock turned off. And Robinson will hold it. It is so loud in here, Calvin Sampson couldn't get their attention. Pull it back, one shot, six seconds left. Robinson. Alley. A what? cacophonous first 20 minutes. What a half for the Cougars. What a time to be a Houston Cougar. 20 minutes of basketball to the Fertitta Center. They're never going to want to leave. Brooks and Hint with 14 apiece. Time to the studio with Seth Greenberg, Chris Patola. Here's Chris Cotter. It's V Week on ESPN as we continue Jim Balvano's fight against cancer. A dream first half of the Houston Cougars in their first game in the Fertitta Center. They lead Oregon by 19. 19 point lead after 20 minutes of play, after 49 years of Hoff Heinz Pavilion. The crazy thing about this, John Sunvold, Houston has had four players score and they lead by 19. Yeah, yeah, maybe surprising, but, but what's changed is the fact that their pace has been so good and their defense is so good. Oregon has not been good, obviously, but the pace that Houston has played and then the production they've gotten from a couple guys has been off the chart. Particularly Nate Hinton, the freshman, already one shy of a season high in the first half. Probably a reason why the coaches picked him as freshman, preseason freshman of the year for the conference. Uh, he's athletic, he can shoot it, uh, he's active on the defensive end, he fits in what Kelvin Sampson wants to do, and the way he's playing tonight, the freshmen like to go on emotion, and he's been off to a good start, and they're leading scores. And when you take Brooks's ability to knock in his first two threes to start the game, and hit coming off the bench, uh, the Cougars would like to bottle that first half and continue it on. Hinton and Brooks have hit nine shots in the field. Houston, uh, Oregon as a team, beg your pardon, has hit six. Armani Brooks, one of just two players to have taken the floor at the old Hoffmines Pavilion two years ago. There are not many Long-time letter winners on this Kelvin Sampson team. Just Galen Robinson in his fourth year and Brooks in his third. So for Dana Altman, 6-19 of the first half, 10 turnovers. What do you say at halftime? Uh, boys, we got to toughen up. Uh, they gave up nine offensive rebounds to Houston for 14 second-chance points. Uh, they, gave, they had 10 turnovers that led to 14 points off the turnovers. Uh, his message... A little bit of message today in shoot around to his guys was we have to be more physical, we have to be tougher. And when a coach says that over and over and you've got a young squad, they don't get it until they get into a game like this one and go, oh my, we're not at the level we need to be. So let's see how they respond second half. Well, a few seconds into the half, Houston's Breon Brady picked up his third foul. Now Bull Bull misses a three and the rebound down to Corey Davis. Here's what's interesting about Bull Bull and what Houston has done with him outside. They're challenging his somewhat set shot, which is unusual because he's 7'2". You would expect him to get open. After he made the first one, every big guy plays off him at Houston, but they challenge his shot when he goes into it. Brady had a block on Bull in the first half. Here's Pritchard with a three and Oregon only had three players score in the first half. Now a fourth, it is Pritchard. Their second leading score at 14 and a half per game. Pritchard's got to get going. He's a leader of this squad. Not a very vocal guy, but again, one of the leaders, one of the guys who's been around. One minute gone by in the second half, 37 to 21, Houston leads. Brady with a double team from White and Bowl. And the takeaway into the hands of Paul White with the shot clock at one anyway. Great play by Pritchard, bat pass by White on the other end. Threw it right away to Cedric Alley. Robinson, five assists in the first half. Extra pass, Davis missed a three. And here is the grad transfer, Ehab Amin. Former Texas A&M Corpus Christi Islander lays it in for two. Okay, so that's the start that Oregon needed and won. 
if they defensively just settle down and don't allow second chance points or at least offensive rebounds to Houston, they can claw their way back in. That's the first field goal for Oregon at a fast break. Fast break points were 14 to 1 in favor of Houston in the first half. Ducks five in a row to start the second. Alley, bounce feed, Brady, out to Davis. Short, Davis knocks the ball into the hands of Amin. And Davis has missed two open threes that has led to fast breaks for Oregon in this half. Meanwhile, Bowl is fouled in the rebound try. And Bowl Bowl will go to the line for Oregon. This is what did not happen in the first half. Here's Amin pushing for the fast break. And you think of Oregon, okay, how do you play Houston, especially tonight? You almost play them from outside in. Take away the jump shots. Force Houston almost pound it inside and see if they can score against the length of Oregon. They didn't make a lot of inside buckets in the first half. Just don't let them get second half points. Brady has checked out. Now that's his fourth foul for Houston, an early seed for him. And Bryson Gresham returns to the game. Second chance points, by the way, to your point. Oregon had none of them in the first half. Ball one for two here. And they may not, uh, this season, again, it's not a physical team, this Oregon Ducks squad. So how do you work around them? Well, you just keep playing. I mean, how you how you want to play, you've got to be, each of the freshmen will become more aggressive as players. And I do expect Wooten to continue his athletic ability. They, they'll be better. Alley rattles had a three offensive rebound to Davis. Houston was plus eight on the boards in the first half. Yeah, it's a killer. Can't give them up. You know the Cougars have to shoot outside shots. So mandatory when an outside shot goes up, find a guy, put a body on, and get to shooters. Robinson, Bull was there. Looked like he got a piece of that one. It'll be a second block for Bull Bull, one of the nation's leaders, unsurprisingly, in that category. Bull working on Alley out of the double team of me. Wooten drove into Davis and rejected by Gresham with a help. Little two-man game, Brooks and Davis leads to a Robinson three. First bucket of the half for Houston. How unselfish, sharing the basketball. There's an official timeout. Kelvin Sampson is upset about something with Armani Brooks. And veteran teams uh, share the ball better than younger teams. Each of the three guys out front, Brooks, Davis, both had shots. They kick it, one more pass, better look, better finish. Don Daly just told us, by the way, that was a warning on the Houston bench. That's the reason for the whistle. Bowl, lofts it up, missed it. Amin with a tip, grabbed by Gresham. And then Amin reaches in with a frustrating foul. As we mentioned, this Oregon team picked with 16 first place votes out of 25 to win the Pac-12. And it was not a good year for the Pac-12 last year. Only two teams in the tournament. It may be, with early indications, just as difficult of a year this year. There's some talented teams. I saw USC earlier in a tournament in Kansas City. Uh, they lost today to Nevada. They lost in one of the games in Kansas City to Texas Tech, which is now ranked 20th. Um, a talented squad there. UCLA's got talent. Washington, Colorado. Uh, the early start, Arizona State. Uh, Dart, uh, Dort, the freshman, averaging over 23 points a game. Oregon has some work to do. They got time before conference play. They're running out of time here in Houston. You're watching the American Conference on ESPN. Houston Cougars leading the Oregon Ducks. A little Saturday night hoops. Pac-12 versus American. First game in the renovated Fertitta Center, the former Hop Hines Pavilion. Cincinnati has a brand new arena, another American Conference team. 
played all their games last year at Northern Kentucky. They moved back into Fifth Third Arena. It was just at Northwestern Wednesday. That new Welsh Ryan Arena is gorgeous. Similar deal here. They cut the capacity by about 1,000. That's more intimate feel. And Villanova with a renovated arena as well. Smart, uh, smart by many of these schools. Capacity's lower. Fills up in a hurry. Demand gets higher for tickets. Talk to Kelvin Sampson a little bit about that before the game and the vision that he had when he took over the Houston job. As Brooks hits a three, his fifth of the game. Kelvin said he had been approached and asked of the folks at Houston, you know, what do you think of getting a brand new arena? And he said, I don't want to deal with that. There's a lot of legislation you have to work through. It'll be better to renovate the old one. First, though, we need somewhere to practice. <laughs> so they had the Guy Lewis practice facility built two years ago. Hoffines renovated, played all their games at Texas Southern last year. First four this season, won all 19 down the road at Texas Southern. And here they are in this sparkling new home. Bull with a wraparound and scores. Bull, Bull with 10 points for Oregon. Pretty mobile uh, and the ability at 7-2 to wrap around, spin, lay it in on the other side. Now, Houston has attempted 40 shots tonight. 29 attempts are threes. Is that too many? That's how they play against tonight. Oregon's a longer team, tougher to score inside. They've hit eight but of those. The, the difference in this half, Oregon is blocking out. One shot attempt, and they're going the other way. It lets them get a chance to get back in this game. Houston is just two for nine in the half with a turnover in nine possessions. Bowl is fouled. Alley in disbelief. And we've seen a little bit different Oregon on the offensive end. Bowl Bowl is inside more. They're going to pound it in, put pressure on a foul play Houston defense. The foul is called against Gresham, 55, his third. Gresham thought he got all ball. Yeah, but it's a moot point now. Tomorrow, the exclusive reveal of the college football playoff. Semi-final matchups, the Orange Bowl and the Cotton Bowl. Up until noon tomorrow, everybody's going to be talking about it. Who's number four? Will it be Georgia, Oklahoma, Ohio State? So who do you have watching Georgia today? Well, Are they one of the four best? Reese and the guys will have it on ESPN in the app at noon tomorrow. I think Georgia's one of the best four teams in the nation. I don't know if that means they'll get in. Yeah, but if they're one of the four, if, if, that, if, if that's the goal. If the goal is to pick the best yeah. four, I think George is one of the best four. Maybe in one chance for three. Didn't think he was going to play tonight, and Fabian White has made a major impact. Big, solid, strong. 6'7", 230. Now goes under the basket to use it. Has a little bit of a decoy. Gets Bull Bull away with the body. Gets him off because he's bigger, wider. And this is a huge positive for Kelvin Sampson and his squad to get him back for this ball game, this atmosphere. You know, Kelvin really probably trying to see what the response would be in a game like this. He's been terrific. And with a foul trouble to Brady and Gresham, White has really been needed tonight. Just guarding Bull on the perimeter. And Bull Bull, such a different type of player at 7-2. He had post position. He will give up his low post position too easily, and then he'll step back outside. Now, if you make it, terrific. If he doesn't, he gives up that inside position that they're trying to establish. He's got the last seven now for Oregon. The Ducks within 16. More good ball movement for Houston. Robinson floats it over Bowl. Rebound grabbed by Kijak. Bowl changes everything just by being his presence. Pritchard wow. lets it fly for three. Solid start for Oregon. Pritchard with another bucket. They had 18 John the whole first half. They've got 15 in seven minutes, seven seconds. That leads to a Houston timeout. Timeout on the court. 
Well, the Ducks have crawled back in on the defensive end, but offensively, Bull Bull has done it inside, now outside, and the leader of this squad has to be Peyton Pritchard. It's his second three of the half. There's emotion from the Ducks. Number one, Notre Dame. Number two, Connecticut. Women's basketball royalty versus the reigning queens. Gino, Muffet, oh my. The Women's Jimmy V Classic, Sunday at four on ESPN. 12th consecutive year, we have been a proud part of V Week here at ESPN. V.org slash donate is the website if you want to join us in the fight against cancer. All donations go to the V Foundation for Cancer Research. Um, we honor the character of Jim Valvano, and, and he's a man whose character you actually got to know quite well, right? You know, it's funny. Uh, I was in high school in 1978, graduating in 79. Uh, I played Milledgeville, Georgia, was a camp. Yeah. I get done with camp, and this is the same grade as Ralph Sampson and Sam Bowie and Isaiah and Dominique. I get a phone call. It's an Italian guy, Coach Valvano, and he is at Iona. So he gets on the phone with me and said, uh, do you know where Iona is? And I said, Coach, I have no clue where Iona is. I'm a kid from the Midwest. He said, you mean you don't know who Jeff Ruland is? He's All-American at Iona. <laughs> so fast forward, he goes to North Carolina State. That team, his 1983 championship team, they came to Missouri in January of that year. Thurl Bailey, at Wittenberg, Lowe, et cetera. We beat them on our court. And the funny part was Coach V walking off, he kind of grabbed me and goes, you know, I wish you'd have gone to Iona, then we might have won the game. But he was a great man. Good to know him, and, and he's meant so much. You left out one detail of that story. Uh, number 24, yep. Which is with that North Carolina State team, uh, how they ended that championship season. Yeah, they beat the folks from yeah. Houston. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you don't want to remind people around here about that 83 championship. So the, nice of you to omit it. Alley. And it's a travel. Again, the website, v.org slash donate. Last year, a record $4.5 million donated to benefit the V Foundation for Cancer Research. Anything that you all can do to help us fight this disease as part of V Week, more than appreciated as we battle cancer in Jimmy V's honor in his name. The great man he was, the great legacy he is left behind. Ducks have had a good second half. Cut the lead to 13. No bowl on the floor right now. Richardson takes it to the 10. It's an 11 point game. Much more aggressive on the offensive end. They're not sitting, they're not standing, they're attacking, and they're putting a lot of pressure on the backside of this Houston defense. Davis open. Missed it. They have missed some open threes tonight, Houston. He's had a tough night. 8-0 run as Richardson is fouled. Well, last night, the Welcome city of Houston, along with the rest of America, first. lost one of its Time great public the servants board. and the 41st president of the United States, George H.W. Bush. Right, the friends. airport here, we have here on the court. named in his Houston honor, George Bush Florida, Intercontinental Houston, Airport, Houston, passed away here in the city at age 94, the former decorated Navy pilot, Yale baseball player, and 41st president at the age of 94 years old. Fans, this is the moment you truly all been waiting for. Houston 6 and 21 from deep in the first half. Not a great percentage, but that percentage has dropped here in the second half. Two for nine from three, three and 12 in the field. And what was a 19 point a half time lead has been cut to 11. And really the struggle, Corey Davis, a 40% three-point shooter, averages 20 a game, is one of nine. And most of the, a lot of those nine, he's been open. He's just missed. Pritchard a contested three. Tracked down by Bailey on the floor. And Bailey was on the sideline. And it's Houston Bowl. Tell you what, Oregon, though, is active. They are going after offensive rebounds. They're attacking. Houston's now got to shore up, Houston find ways to get buckets on the offensive end. Morgan looks in the second half like Houston did in the first yeah, half. Yeah, a totally different team, and obviously Dane Altman's squad, he, he had a little bit to say. Maybe some of the new 
paint was peeled <laughs> in this building from his words Somebody at Somebody called Tillman. They need some more money for the locker rooms. <laughs> Davis out of a double finds White. Cougars 19 home wins in a row, tied for the second longest streak in the nation. All of them two miles down the road at Texas Southern. Robinson was stripped. And that ball is out of bounds off of Bailey, who was uh, stripped. Er, seven to shoot for Houston. Victor Bailey Jr. has been very active on both ends of the floor. Active hands. The offensive rebound couldn't control it last time down, but he's around the ball. Doug Daly with a message for the Oregon bench to a crouched Dana Altman. White that was a dangerous pass by Robinson, only his second turnover. Ducks looking to add to this 8-0 run as Root trying to get position on Davis, a pass thrown away. Robinson lost it to Pritchard. Payne Pritchard makes this a single-digit game with Houston's lead cut to nine. I'd like to say December basketball. And why three straight turnovers by each one? You know, back, forth, back, forth. Take care of the basketball. Make the pass when it's available. Quit trying to do too much with the ball both sides. It is the first day of December, so yeah, you'd be right. accurate. White, the 7-2 ball on him, got rid of it quickly. Davis bumped on a three and fouled by Pritchard. You know, Altman, with a shake of his head, knows his junior leader should know better. A good steal. I think an easy steal. Threw it right to his hands, but a good finish. And again, this Oregon team. You get it under 10, the 10 minute mark. You probably couldn't ask for a better scenario for Dane Altman when they left the end of the first half. Can this get a shooter back on rhythm? Three yes. looks with nobody yes. on Yes, there's two things that get a shooter back going. Make a layup or get to the foul line. If you're a good free throw shooter and a good shooter, get to the foul line, get a free throw, get to the comfort zone that the ball is going through the net. Remember, this is a new building. Uh, this team, he, even the home team, has not practiced here. New buckets, new rims, everything, even for the home squad. Those were big ones for Davis. Snaps a 10-0 Oregon run. Pritchard. And Pritchard is called on the ward off for an offensive foul. That's two possessions in a row. Pritchard is called for a foul. Dane Altman shakes his head. And he agreed with the official. Yeah. If you extend the arm that far, it makes it easy for the official right when he's right in front of him. So Pritchard fouls Davis on the three. He hits all the free throws and commits a turnover with a push-up. The Ducks have quickly, they quickly get to Brooks when he's caught it. And Brooks has not been a factor the last few minutes. Ball, ball with a block. Bailey on the run out. Bailey finishes hard and falls into the Houston cheerleaders. Let's talk about a good athlete. Gets it from one end of the floor, goes the other, crosses over and finishes. Spectacular. Bailey family, the 20 friends and family members in attendance love this. He's left-handed. He crosses back over with a step. And more importantly, finishes it and then makes a free throw. Victor Bailey Jr., 7 of 7 at the line this year. The Austin native cuts the lead back to 9. Foul was against Davis, his third. Davis a little too long for Gresham. Out of bounds stays with Houston. Cedric Alley will check in, replace Fabian White. Quiet night for Alley, who had 19 two games ago against BYU. Did not score on Wednesday, and a close win against UT Rio Grande Valley. Has not scored tonight. the official portrait of Kelvin Sampson right there. Arms folded in the scowl. Well, he's scowling because his team has shut it down on the offensive end. Now, they've been in attacking mode, just haven't made open jump shots. Built up a big first half lead of 
19 points, and the feeling was at halftime, did Oregon have a chance to get back in this game? Everybody who knows Dane Altman knows how he coaches would assume, yeah, they'll make some runs, and they have. They're in a very, I would say, a comfortable position to continue the momentum that they have and has quieted the crowd quite a bit. Houston has led by as much as 20. Oregon has not led in the game. Cougars scored first and have scored most. Robinson drives on Bull. Out to Brooks. Missed it. Bull and Richardson with Aaron Richardson grabbing the rebound. Tough shot by Brooks. Hand in the face, very deep. Sold out crowd gets into it with Oregon threatening to cut the lead. Bowl misses a three. No one boxed out Richardson, but Gresham cleaned up the mess. Here goes Robinson. Out to Davis. Missed another one. But it will stay with Houston. Good activity by Alley on the board. I can hear it in your voice, partner, that when Davis caught it, after making those three free throws, they didn't knock it in. He's been short on his jump shot. Most of them have been front rim. Doesn't necessarily mean he's tired. But as a shooter, if you're short, release the ball earlier on the jump shot so that it's on the way up and you're not holding on to it. But the more you miss, the more you guide. But you got to get that out of your head. When you would go into a slump like this, a shooter, would it get into your head? Oh, it sure does. Oh, oh great much. pass. What a fine Davis to Gresham. Yeah, but, but you know you're a shooter. you got to keep shooting. That's, that's why you're on the floor. That's why your team needs you. Richardson, beg your pardon, that is a mean with a contact. But an offensive foul is the call. I think the Houston students behind us we're also late to recognize it, and now they rise to their feet as one. The folks in Houston wanted a marquee opponent to open this building. They got what they wanted, and the Pac-12's preseason champion as picked by the media and they have them on the ropes. And coaches understand the importance of these November December games. Wow, that was deep. But the importance of thinking of NCAA, right? These cross conference matchups. And Kelvin Sampson and that bench have this crowd on their feet. Houston does not have many chances for a signature non-conference win. This may be their best LSU here in a couple of weeks, and they are making the most of it. Pritchard threw it away. Davis made sure he couldn't shoot it. Bull wasn't ready for the pass, and Houston is smothering the Ducks again. And Armani Brooks, money from deep. Cougs by 14. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Brand new team shop here at the sparkling Fertitta Center. Get you one of those hats, one of those straw hats next time we get here. What do you think? I might need it as uh, sunny as it was today, 80 yeah. degrees. I should have been out there golfing somewhere. I'm surprised you didn't find time, actually. Shoot arounds were inconvenient. Uh, I was working. You got to work game. when you're here in town. He's John Sunbold. I'm Kevin Brown. We're thrilled to be part of this first ever game at the Fertitta Center. The Houston Cougars in their fifth year under Kelvin Sampson have built up into one of the powerful teams here in the American Athletic Conference. We've got three teams to the tournament last year, Cincinnati, Wichita State, Houston. Cougs got to the round of 32, lost on the Jordan Poole buzzer beater. That shot doesn't go in. They beat Michigan. And who knows from there with the way that bracket opened up. They're working on a full court play today. And 
and uh, Kellen Sampson, the son of Kelvin, a shooter out with a bit of a sarcastic, still wounded bite. Said, I wish we could <laughs> sub in Jordan for this. They haven't forgotten about it, but they are hoping to build on it. There's the coach's preseason poll, UCF, with Aubrey Dawkins, preseason player of the year, B.J. Taylor. 7-6 taco fall pick to win it. Cincinnati, Houston right behind him. A good win by uh, Central Florida over Alabama, and now they travel to another SEC opponent, Missouri, on Sunday. Did you say UCF beat Alabama? Uh, yes, they did. They wanted Bama, they got it. <laughs> sort of. UCF football, by the way, won the American Conference Football Championship today. And that was another good game, close game. Yeah, they were down 17 and a half, came back to beat Memphis. And they are unbeaten going into bowl season for the second straight year. Who's ball? Houston ball off the tie-up. 6.41 to go, and Kelvin Sampson still wondering about something. It's a freshman hit on 14 of the first half, has not scored in the second. Alley at the elbow. Yeah, Alley's had a hesitation. When he faces and sees the rim, he's had a hesitation to shoot. And so either you've got to be committed when you catch and face if it's open to shoot it, or if you're not committed, then make one more pass, keep running the play. Richardson, the freshman. He's had a terrific ball game. He's been the one constant for Dana Altman on the floor. He scored 11. Running the team now without Pritchard in the game. Hit the alley. Bumped and a blocking foul against Kijab. That's his fourth. Cedric Alley to the line for the first time today. Redshirt freshman from Houston. And yeah, that's his first point. Richard, and for Houston, number 25. Tuesday night, the 24th annual Jimmy B Classic kicks off in the Garden. Oklahoma and Notre Dame have had such great years in the gridiron. Meet for the first time with the Hardwoods, 7 Eastern, Florida and West Virginia. Also had great football seasons, too. 9 Eastern to follow that game on ESPN. Wherever you are, you can find those games as long as you have the ESPN app. Florida and West Virginia, two teams aggressive on defense. Mike White's Florida team solid again. Huggy Bears got a good one. Big 12's going to have a great league once again. See if anybody can knock off Kansas. They're awfully good. What do you think? Uh, no, they won't. Until someone does, no. I mean, that's simple as that. Last year was a year someone could get it. Now, Kansas State's very good. They were upset today by Marquette. Uh, uh, West Virginia's going to be good. But until uh, this Kansas team is outstanding. They're loaded. They're deep. They won a year ago with maybe a lesser squad than what's used to for Kansas. A great win for them a week ago over Tennessee and Brooklyn. I say a year ago, a week ago. A Kansas week ago, yeah. Tennessee. Jump ball. In the traveling world of broadcasting partner, I, 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 knew, I knew what you, were, you meant. It feels like it. Jump ball, this one will go to Oregon. Paul White returns, replacing Amin. Richard back on the floor with. 5.18 to go. <laughs> 7,100 strong once again to their feet in Houston. denied by Gresham with five to shoot. That possession has never developed for Oregon. Well, if you don't get into anything until 10 seconds left, now it breaks down. It puts a lot of pressure on a guy like Pritchard to make a play. That's not his strength, just a one-on-one -on -one make a play. This is his strength. Pritchard had a great look from the corner, rebounded by Brooks. Good look, good shot, didn't go in. Do you need to get Bull to touch on offense? Well, if he, if, if, you don't have to. You'd like to. Does, does Bull get involved 
when he needs to, right? Does he step up? Does he demand the ball? He's young. This kid likes having it. Brooks trying for a 7 3, missed it. Wow. Woot could really get up. He's so fun to watch. Richardson went right into Robinson, and Galen Robinson draws another offensive foul. So the difference between a senior and a freshman. A senior almost baits a freshman, a guy like Richardson, who is a little loose with the ball. Not as a turnover, but with his body. So as he's coming, just a little looser than he needs to be. So Robinson's been watching this all night. And all you're doing is baiting the guy to go, okay, he likes to continue it all the way to the end. And he took that charge. Well, then Robinson turned it over off his foot. 16 turnovers in the game for Oregon. Houston turns it over, conversely, for the 11th time. And what's the difference? Dane Altman takes out his freshman because he has to learn. Kelvin Sampson leaves in his senior because he knows the senior's mad he made his face. I understand. Sealing off White, wanted the ball, got it. Bailey at three. And Robinson, the rebound, he got hit in the face. Not sure if this is a stoppage for a foul or simply a stoppage to let Robinson recover. Yeah, I don't think they called the foul, just blew the whistle. He knew he got hit, but they didn't see the hit. See White's hand get up in the forehead, the eyes there. Robinson walks off. We've hit the under four in Houston. Cougars have the lead. Houston 353 away from the 20th straight home win. They won 15 at home last year. 27 overall. They couldn't get to 28 because of this in the second round Rock of the tournament. Mid court. Two seconds. Rockbond off the pool. Three for the win. He got it. He got it. Jordan Poole, the freshman, hits it at the buzzer. What a uh, what a heartbreak. They had played, Houston had played so well. Rob Gray had been terrific in the NCAA tournament. He had 39 against San Diego State, and, and they led Michigan, right? He had Michigan beat, and you had a chance, and that's a shot that beats you. It, it tells you a little bit about where the Houston program is, right? They were right on the edge of being in the Sweet 16. Uh, you lose a guy like Gray, but you've got veteran players back. They're tough-minded. They've got a tough-minded coach. Uh, they're in a good league that they're picked to be one, two, or three in. Uh, there's challenges ahead. You've got a new building, facilities to practice in. You've got excitement in the city of Houston. It looks like a big year ahead for this Cougar team. Remember that tournament last year? That was the first one they made since 2010. It was their first at-large bid since 1990. And it's a shot that still stings especially because of the road Michigan went through after that. They had a seven seed in Texas A&M. They had a nine seed in FSU and an 11 seed in Loyola. Not to disparage those teams, simply to say that that shot doesn't go in. Houston is the higher seed every yes. game yes. up to the national title if they get there. And, and they're going to be good again. And that's why the tournament is so great. And look what it did for Michigan. Michigan's one of the best teams in the country right now. Yeah. They're beating the heck out of a lot of great teams. Villanova, North Carolina. They also won today. Uh, who'd they knock off? Oh, they Purdue. beat the heck out of Purdue. Yeah. Bull Bull in the drive. Crowd wants to travel. However, Bull Bull's just 7 2, so his steps get him a little bit closer to the basket than most <laughs> human beings. I mean, is this a travel? You tell me. Well, yeah. I, I, mean, I, I really think it's a jump ball, but. Well, it's Bull, not now. And, and Bull Bull is such a unique player to watch. He's got a terrific skill set. He is 7'2". He is thin. Runs well. You always try to figure out how high is the motor. 
But when you're seven two, what I mean, the motor runs differently than a six five guy. We've seen him knock in threes. We've seen him inside. Foul is a fourth on Gresham. He stays in the game. With just over three to play. Houston is a 67% free throw shooting team. Most of the time, it will be in the hands of one of their elder guards out front. Davis short there. He's had a bad night shooting. Out of bounds to Oregon. For Eastern tomorrow on ESPN2, the game of the year in women's basketball. It certainly was last season. Odd to see UConn without a number one next to its name. That's because Notre Dame won the whole thing last year. Irish and Huskies, the women's Jimmy B Classic for Eastern on ESPN2. Paul White. Quiet night offensively for him. So you take a look, 2.30 left. Oh, what right ahead. Good pass. Maybe and White finishes. You try to start doing numbers, or I start doing numbers. Can da or dangerous when that happens. Well, can Oregon get to 62 or 64? Well, nice. got to 48. Do they, have, do they have time to get to a number? What, what does Houston have to get to win this game? Maybe it's 66. Good hit ahead, bull late running back. Take advantage when you can of big guys that can run the floor. All right, so how's Oregon going to get to 66? <laughs> they got to push, right? You can't walk it at all. You got to push. Shooters got to take shots. They got to continue to attack the rim because it's put a lot of pressure on this Houston team that is struggling inside with foul problems. Bryson Gresham just fouled out to add to those foul problems. Because the best thing that can happen is making points when the clock is stopped. Beg your pardon, that was White's fourth, actually, so Gresham's still in the game with four. You also have to speed up Houston. Houston doesn't need to shoot. If they only need a couple buckets, they don't need to shoot. Paul White with a three-point play. White with his first points tonight. And Houston makes a substitution on the free throw to set up its press. Alley will inbound. Davis double teams, kept the dribble alive. Wayward pass, and Robinson did well to control it. Wow. He is quick. Woo. That wasn't handled the best, but they're where they need to be right now. Jalen Robinson Jr., one for five for the field, but he's made an impact in so many ways. On the drive here, that was a wild shot, but he gets it back and missed it. Richardson to push for the Ducks. Key jab! Smothered by Gresham. Too early of a shot on one end, but defensively. You get back, you protect the rim. Now you're allowed to set up in your half-court defense. Richardson. 4-3. That was huge. Good timeout by Dan Altman. Final one. He used three in the first half. Oregon within eight. They have been able to get points quickly and not much time going off. 14 for Richardson, his fourth straight game, setting a new season high. What do you think Kelvin Sampson is saying right now? I can't use the words, but take care of the basketball. It has been sloppy, though they didn't turn it over. And in the half-court sets, it gets back to execution. When they're running something, everybody's got to make hard cuts because then that draws the defender. They've got to help when guys cut hard. If they do that, then you live with the fact they'll get open shots and handle it. They don't need to force stuff early in shot clock. But if they make good cuts and have a chance on those cuts to score an easy bucket, you score. Don't foul on offensive rebounds, right? And run back defense. And opposite for Oregon. They'll keep putting pressure on. Nearly got a steal last time. Keep forcing a hurried up. Try to speed up Houston. 
Make them feel uncomfortable. Get another bucket. Get the crowd a little hesitant. Get the feeling of nervousness in the crowd that gets to a home team. I think Kelvin Sampson has that feeling of nervousness <laughs> right now. He doesn't, he doesn't look comfortable, let's put it that the way. The surrender cobra pose on the sideline. It's the closest Oregon's been since 18 to 10. I still expect Corey Davis Jr. to make a play, make a shot, something, because he's a terrific player. Robinson got it back from Alley. Crash it back to Robinson. Oh, he missed the dunk. Got a wide open layup. And the six foot senior went for the slam. Take the layup or don't take it. You can pull it back out. Again, you don't need it. Much better. Off the Richardson miss, Houston will burn some clock. Or oh, just think if Will Richardson's shot would have gone in. This building would have gone. Right. Davis leading free throw shooter in the American Conference dribbles. Oh, Davis with four. And a foul called with Pritchard on his hip. Or a bad, and I, 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 it's hard to tell from our angle. But if Pritchard reached with the shot clock's winding down, and he didn't need to reach, he had Davis on, on the side. Davis is not a tall guy. At 6 1, and he had it covered up. You reach, now you get Davis a foul line for two free throws. And for the most part, these are automatic. 16 of 17 on the year from the line. Oregon substitution of the first team, Paul White. Not Corey Davis's finest night in shooting, three for 16 for the field. But he scored 12, and his team is a minute away from a signature win. Pritchard, short, bull with the jam, barely got up in the air and still slammed it home. Terrific defense because they shut out Richardson in the front. They had to take a shot. More clock ran off. Even though the tip dunk was in, clock ran down. And that is ruled Oregon ball with Davis being triple team. 41 seconds to go. Don Daly's going to head over to the scores table. Take a look at this. This is ruled off of Houston. And it might have been. Well, Richardson there touched it after it went out of bounds. The question was Davis's yes. hand, the last one up. Yeah, it's hard to tell. And if it's not indisputable, the call yep, must remain the same. Boy, this has been some fun night, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been a terrific atmosphere. City of Houston. Uh, Advertised and sold this and pushed this. Great turnout early. People were standing outside. The doors opened at 6.30. Uh, I walked across campus and students were coming and when the doors were opened up, it had a magical feeling in the building. Kelvin Sampson knew today of the importance of playing a team like Oregon that's nationally ranked. Call on the floor stays the same. Oregon ball. Right now it is a three-score game, 41.4 to go. Richardson gets it into Bull. Bull around Alley, and Bull can finish, plus a foul. Oh, a senseless foul on Alley to stop the clock further and give Oregon a chance at an extra point. You know, once he, once he made the move, Alley's just got to get out of the way. Let him have the two. If you stay close and you reach and slap, it gives you official. Well, partner, they're at 56. What did we say? Could they get to 64? All right? I think you said 66 was the number, but. So right. there we go. You need 63 at least. I still think Houston's going to have to make some free throws if they handle the ball. Ball completes the three point play. Oregon will put key jab on the ball. How confident is Houston handling the basketball? Not confident there. Robinson takes the third timeout. You've got to hit someone to the ball that wants the ball, and the guy taking it out has got to make a quick pass. And in the catch, you split the defense or you get fouled. You can't run away from it. 
Now these teams have only played once before. The last time Oregon was in the city of Houston was in 2006 at Rice. Oregon trailed that game by eight with 56 seconds to go. Tied the game in regulation and won an overtime. So their history against this team is not particularly extensive, nor is their history in this city, but the small sample size, last minute comebacks in Houston, Texas are not out of Oregon's grasp. You know, the great thing about early season games, both coaches, it gives a barometer of what their teams are like and where they are, where they need to be when, when the season keeps going on, especially against the conference play. And Dana Altman can tell his team, if you play with the passion that you played in the second half, we could be a pretty good team. Brooks is fouled. Oregon had a nice trap on Davis. He got it away to Robinson. Pushed it up to Brooks. And Houston breaks the press to put Armani Brooks at the line. Well, Bull Bull has had a night that, uh, like a night she's going to have. He's been a factor on both ends of the floor at times, and at times he's not been. But you see with his mobility and his length the, the problems he poses for opponents. And Brooks misses the first, so this will be a two-score game no matter what. There is no sense to make this easy, right? <laughs> I mean, keep everybody in the building is right on their edge of their seats. You got 7,100 here. You want 7,100 to the final buzzer. Brooks oh, wow. missed them both. Wow. Bucket, and this is a one-score game. Richardson. And a foul on the floor. Houston wanted to travel. Foul was called before the steps. And Richardson will shoot two with Oregon in the double bonus. It's been amazing how many points Houston, or Oregon has been able to score with the clock not moving. Opposite of what the Cougars wanted. Richardson hits it. The foul was Corey Davis's fourth. Oregon will bring Kijab and Amin into the game for Pritchard and White. Pritchard has four fouls, so he comes out defensively. And Kevin, now Oregon has the freedom to foul whomever because there is a little, there's such a nervousness in the building that Brooks just missed the two free throws. Everybody's going to be a little nervous going to the foul line. They should foul right there. Alley got, got away from the double team, and Alley is fouled before he got it up the floor to Brooks. Boy, that whistle might have saved Oregon because Brooks was going in for an easy two. Yeah. Or we think Bo Bo was chasing. That's true. He didn't need much ground to, <laughs> to gain on someone. So Cedric Alley at the line today is two of two. And now six of six from the line this season. It's back to a two score lead. That's a huge make. Obviously. But after Brooks had missed two. Gets him to 64. Nope. Another miss. Oregon will push with Richardson. Richardson guarded by Davis. Inside the bowl. And Bull throws it down. It's a two-point game. One timeout left for Houston. The inbound to Brooks. And Armani Brooks is fouled. He just missed two a couple of possessions ago. Normally you'd think you want Brooks in the line. He's such a good shooter. Yeah, I, th I think you do. I mean, you miss two, but this is where he's going to be all season long. He's relied upon as a as a clutch player for this team, and you got to go make the shot. And he gets the first. It's what you practice for. It's why you play. You, you wipe out the bad ones, store away the good ones. This makes it a two-possession game. Got it. Friendly new rims. Oregon needs a shot quickly. Pritchard to three. No. Ball tipped around into the hands of Davis. 
Houston wins. After 19 straight at Texas Southern, the Cougars open the Fertitta Center in style. Great atmosphere, and give Oregon credit in the second half. Down 19 at halftime, Dane Altman had some words for his young team. They came back, made it a game, terrific win for Houston. The first of what will be many exciting nights here at the Fertitta Center. Kelvin Sampson's Cougars extend the nation's second longest home win streak. They knock off the Ducks 65-61 in Houston.